Hello guys, I hope you're doing good. In today's video we're gonna have a closer look at the oscilloscope or in this particular case at the oscilloscope of the Unitrain. But don't worry here, so the information you will get here you can use with any other oscilloscope basically too. So we're just focusing now our product but like I said there are informations which have a general meaning. So that's the Unitrain interface, what you see here, and yeah, we pay not too much attention right now to digital in, digital out, and all the other things. What we are focusing today is channel A, B, C, and D, because that are more or less the input channels for the oscilloscope. Everything what you connect here can be measured in the Labsoft software with the oscilloscope tool, and there you see, yeah, what the measure measurement results will be. The little bit tricky thing is here, <laughs> some of you who, you who have dealt already with oscilloscope, they were lucky when they find out about the auto-tune button basically. So this button puts yourself in the lucky position that the oscilloscope will find or try to find the right adjustments for your measured signal on its own so that you don't have to do anything. But of course the Unitrain does not have this function as we want to make sure when it's used as a training system that the people understand what they're doing there and why they yeah why they do the adjustments in order to measure the right signal. So now let's have a look at the oscilloscope in the Labsoft course. So it doesn't matter which course we are using for that, basically we'll find it in any course. So we go to instruments, measuring device, oscilloscope. Then it's asking for us, for example, to connect to the device. You have three different possibilities, USB, wireless, uh, Wi-Fi and simulation. As I don't have connected right now, we just use the simulation mode. So let's make it a little bit bigger here. So this is now the measurement area, basically what you see here. On the right side, you have the different adjustments. And right now we are in the two channel mode. You see it here, A and B. You remember the picture of the Unitrain, where you also have the A and B channel. So that would be everything what you connect to A and B would be measured on these two channels here. But of course we can make it a little bit more complex, so we click here, down here on that button, then we switch from the two channel mode to the four channel mode. And now same story again, but with C and D as well. So let's have a look at the different adjustments which you can do here on the right hand side. First is the time division. So that means the time which pass by for each division. So division is this one here. From that to that, one division, two divisions, three divisions, four divisions, five divisions and so on. In that, um, uh, with this adjustment, it means that from here to here, this shows a time of 100 nanoseconds. And we can change this now from 100 nanoseconds to one microsecond, millisecond, up to 10 seconds. So this depends on what you want to measure. If you have very fast signals, you of course need a very yeah, short time. If you want to measure a slow signal or a signal where it's important to measure it over a longer time, you can choose one of these here. So for example, if you want to show the start of a high voltage system, it makes sense to choose one of those here. If you are measure the CAN bus, you are more in that area here. So, and this of course counts for any channel. So you can't choose uh, different time divisions for different channels. The time division counts for any channel. Then we come here to the different channels. So while we have here focused on the X-axis, we are now focusing this axle here. Okay, so this is now for the amplitude basically. On tells us that the channel is on. When we click on it, it's deactivated, so we won't see it here. Volt port division. So this is now the same what counts for the time. Here now you can switch or choose between different divisions which show different voltages. So from 20 millivolt up to 10 volt. When we choose, for example, 10 volt, that means from here to here we have 10 volt. So when a signal now goes up to here, we know that we would have 30 volts at this amplitude over a certain time. Invert, pretty easy. That means it just is inverting or mirroring the signal. 
So for example, if you have a rectangle signal which goes up here, it will be inverted and be down here then. Then we have the different um, modes, AC, DC and ground. So that's more or less important what you measure. If you measure a DC signal, you can stay with DC. If you measure AC signal, you should go here. And the Y position here just moves the graph up or down. But just make sure not to confuse yourself. When you go here, for example, you are still at zero volt, okay? It's not now minus 10 volts. So you have to make sure if you move or if you shift these channels that you do not mix that up. Therefore, it's, it's a little bit careful to do it. Uh, basically, just do it when you really want to see the difference in the signal. This is absolutely the same for the other channels here. And then we come to the trigger. So the trigger, you can choose one of the channels and it means that it will catch the signal basically or trigger trigger on that signal. For example, when you have an, um, yeah, let's say the, the, it can be a high voltage signal, it can be canvas signal, but it also can be a um, signal from the engine management, for example, for the motor position sensor, for the inductive sensor, you can choose it. Then you have the rising edge or falling edge. So that means here it will trigger on the rising edge. When you go here, it will trigger on the falling edge. So when the signal don't have a falling edge on the oscilloscope, for example, because it raises up to a certain value and will stay there, it can't be triggered then. So you have to make sure that you really look if you want to go for the rising or for the falling edge. Single means that you just do one snap of it. So basically when you do single and it triggers then on the signal, it will automatically change to stop. And then stop, it means it stopped the signal. Okay. So also here with this one, when we, for example, go to channel A, you see now we have a little cross there. And level here goes in that direction or moves the cross in that direction and pre moves it in that direction. So when we have a look here, you see I can now move the cross to the position where I want to trigger or stop the signal. I also can say when I now the trigger is active, you see it here with this red lamp. And I when I have the right signal but I just want to stop the picture so that it doesn't move anymore and that it stays there I can click on my own on stop and then it will freeze the screen basically or the oscilloscope screen. Down here there is another special channel we can activate that here you see it when the new color comes into the game that's a calculation channel and this is where we can add or multiply here again we have a different kind of um, voltage per division which we can choose and this calculation depending on if we are in the two channel or four channel mode so it will add or multiply the two other channels so the calculation channel will, will be an addition of A and B or for example a multiplication of A and B even when you go to the four channel mode then with the four channels basically down here we have the cursor and this is for channel A and B. When we go back to four channel mode, then we have the four channels and this is where we can choose the cursor. And now you see it here. We have, here's our trigger, which we also can move now by the mouse click. So when I leave that, you see that's gone. And here we have our cursor. So with this cursor, I can measure basically everything when there would be a signal now. Here is the other part of it. So here I really can see between two, two, two areas. What can I measure inside these areas? And you see it here. It's the delta then basically of this. Delta of time and delta of that. What you measure here. So when I go down, you see it switched then to 10 volts. Okay, that's basically exactly what we said before. Um, you can choose between this screen and the uh, standard screen by clicking here. So 
when you click here you see it's standard when you click again now you have this more complex view where you see the different trigger when you have activated it or the trigger when you have activated again here or calculation can go or the cursor so like I said cursor here and of course sorry that I forgot before cursor here in order to measure the time so that means here with these two you can measure the delta of the time and with these two you can measure the delta of the um, of the amplitude so so now we have a look at the oscilloscope with the real signal i've just using the function generator of the unitrain and put out a sinus voltage with 100 percent amplitude and a frequency from with one kilohertz. and now you see it directly i have put it on both channels so the same signal on channel a and b you see it when i put this down and activate this one there you see we have when we change the Y position you have exactly the same signal just on A and B so but now we get rid of B that you just see the A channel and now the first trick if you want to get it back on the uh, zero line and you just yeah, want to adjust the line you can go to ground and this shows you the zero level basically so when you go up here now I know that now I know that I'm back at a zero line and I can go back then to AC. So what does AC and DC do? You won't see a difference here, but DC shows the whole signal. So all the AC parts and the DC parts. When you click on AC, there's only showing the AC parts of the signal. But you see, it it it's not a difference here because we just have an AC part here. So there's no DC which can be removed on the EC adjustment. When we now change the time division, you just see what happens. So now we're on a really, really fast one and you just, yeah, you don't can recognize the signal anymore because it's at one kilohertz. When we go now to 500 microseconds, you see it becomes easier to see the sinus. One millisecond yeah, is perfect here. And when you go higher, you get then a weird <laughs> sinus signal basically but this is just because of the um, time the, the or the long time division here so we go back to one milliseconds when we go now to channel a and we working here you see now how we can change the division of the voltage so basically it's now at 10 volt when we go to 5 volt basically what you see that the amplitude is shown bigger as one division is now not 10 volt but 2 volt but if you change this of course you don't change anything in the amplitude if I want to change the amplitude I have to go to the function generator and really change the amplitude what you see here okay so this is not changing the amplitude itself it's just changing solution how you uh, yeah, what's the solution of the signal or of your amplitude basically when I would put it to invert <laughs> you won't see a difference here but basically this signal will be mirrored <clears throat> let's come now to the trigger when we come to channel A you see now this black cross over here when we switch to uh, that view it will change and you will have T this is what you see here T T. We remove the cursor for now. So this is <coughs> just the trigger now where you can now change the X and the Y position. So basically what we do now, we can now say we go here and we go here. So now the trigger will be set to here as we are on a rising edge. When we go to fallen edge, you will see it jumps over here to the fallen edge pretty easy. Normally we can also adjust the position of the trigger with these buttons here, but we don't have to when we use this view as we then can directly use um, the adjustments over here. When we now go to single, it will directly go to stop because it catch the signal and then stop the signal. So let's go back. I can directly go to stop now. And when I do stop, I can even now deactivate the signal. You see it here. Um, the signal is still present as this picture is frozen. Let's jump over the calculation channel. So basically the calculation channel will be a new channel 
and this works now on add or multiply so this tries to multiply or add channel A and channel B and yeah we have on both channels the same signal so you get the result what you see here in the oscilloscope basically where you can also do the fancy stuff with moving the Y position and invert the signal so but let's go away from here now we have also channel A and channel B uh, for the cursor so let's go to channel A now and now you see again I will remove the trigger and now you see we have now the cursor where we for example can check the amplitude which you then see something like here 10 volts you see it fits here or you also can go for the frequency one kilohertz you see it here of course from one division to one division it's one kilohertz and so you can move this through the whole signal basically and just see what you find out there you see it one as frequency or as time at last we just have these buttons over here so basically here you can change the um, yeah how how the different signals are viewed to each other so when x to t the signal is like um, the signal refers to the timeline when you go here this is now where you don't do it against the time but two signals against each other this is why it looks like a little bit weird here so it doesn't make sense normally you do all the measurements and um, the value against the time otherwise when you have to use this there will be an uh, info that you have to switch to that mode okay and very important for the <laughs> oscilloscope here at the unitrain when you press the button f1 you get directly into the help so of course this counts for the unitrain oscilloscope but i hope this helped a bit as all the adjustments here can really be um, transferred to any other oscilloscope so trigger calculation channel more or less cursor and the different channels and the adjustments that's pretty typical for all the other oscilloscope so like i said uh, if you have more questions or do you want to have more info on such general things just let us know otherwise i hope you had a great day it's soon christmas so i wish you a merry christmas a great time i hope you have a few days off and a happy new year have a good one friends bye